YouTube, Kato here, and we are playing some cards today. I came off a winning session from the last episode, and so we're gonna try to capitalize on that and continue the momentum. Poker, it was a lot about the buildup. Uh, if you're down four sessions in a row, it's really hard to do well that fifth session and excel. If you're up five sessions in a row, it's uh, easy to snowball that into bigger and bigger success. So it's uh, a game of getting rich slowly, very slowly, and so I'm just gonna try to make that snowball a little bigger today. I brought my $150 buy-in as usual, and it's Sunday, so it's gonna be popping. Let's get in there and play some cards. It looks like the crowd for today has not quite arrived, but there's about 20 on the board. I'm at the top of the list, so I get my seat right away. This is a fun episode. I'm sitting at a wild table. There's a few college guys here, and no, it's not next-gen poker, but they go all in three ways pretty early in the session with Queen three suited, queen nine suited, and a wonderful 10 three offsuit. Of course, the run out comes out and the 10 wins on the river with the with the three outer on the river. So I guess that's the table we're at today. I'm looking forward to making some money, hopefully. We look down very shortly after at king, king, pocket kings in the small blind. The pot is $15 and it's raised up to $13. I'm not gonna let this go for cheap. I'm in the small blind. These guys are wild. I think I can size up to 55 and get at least one caller. I was incorrect. Everyone folds to me and I pick up about 10 big blinds uncontested. I'm fine with that. Next hand of note is ace 10 offsuit in the cutoff. I open in the cutoff. I want that $4 for my in and out burger on the way home, but I get called by the big blind. I haven't played a lot with the big blind, but I do know that he folds in the blinds a lot. I'm not sure how wide his defending blind rages, but when the flop comes four of spades, three of hearts, ten of spades, we're definitely betting. We have the top pair top kicker, backdoor nut flush draw. He checks to me and I bet $15 making the pot. $36. He elects to make the call. The pot's $51 and we're going to the turn. The turn is the two of spades, which hits his range better. It completes straights. It completes some flushes. I do have the nut flush and the ace blocker, but I still have top pair top kicker with a great draw. I should definitely be betting here. When he checks, I make a mistake looking back on it, and I check back to the river. The river comes out three of diamonds, pairing the board, definitely hitting his range again. I'm not sure what he has, but he decides to size up to $30 this time, and go ahead and take the initiative. Maybe he thinks that I have nothing. Maybe he has a misdrawn. and he thinks that a $30 bet into an $80 pot is going to get it. But I do have top pair, top kicker, and I should have absolutely bet on the turn. I'm going to get punished here as I tr throw in my $30 and he flips over three, five of clubs. He would have called a turn bet, I'm assuming, because he does have a open ended straight draw, but it's disappointing to see that the three that paired the board was what he had in his hand. I pick up eight of diamonds, six of spades in the small blind. There's three limpers and I decide to complete just calling and the big blind checks. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing in this position with a small blind. I have not studied it that much, but with eight of diamonds, six of spades, I'm hoping to hit the flop hard or just get out of the way. It's only $2 more to participate in a $15 pot. My hand has decent playability because it's kind of connected. And when the flop comes out, the six of clubs, eight of hearts, jack of diamonds, I've hit bottom two pair. Bottom pair looks great, but on a connected board and with two cards to come, a lot can change with the strength of my hand. So I should probably be more aggressive, but once again, I am slow playing a little too much. I just call the $10 that the middle position bets. We're going to the turn $35 in the pot, and it brings a very connected, very juicy seven of diamonds. Backdoor diamonds get there, nine, 10 gets there, and the opponent sizes up to $35 after I check. That's a pot size bet. So the pot is now $70. It's 35 for me to call, bringing the pot to $105. I could also raise here, but I'm thinking that if I raise, I'm only getting called by hands that probably beat me. I could be trying to attack hands like Jack 10, but I think Jack 10 will still call top pair with a gut shot. So I'd elect to make the call. And once again, I look back at my cards for like the fourth time. It's ridiculous. The river comes the ace of diamonds, one of the worst cards in the deck. The Jack ace gets there, six ace, eight ace. There are a lot of hands that now beat me. I'm thinking about turning my hand into a bluff, but I realize there's probably no need to as I could be sitting with the best hand right now and I would hate to get re-raised and have to make a difficult decision, which would actually be an easy decision to fold. But I check and he checks back. He sees my hand, the dealer pushes up my two pair, and he goes ahead and mucks. So we end up getting away with this one. We scoop a $105 pot on a very scary board. I'm guessing he had a jack, and sure enough, we pull out the small blind special. Poker Beast, I'm doing everything I can to bring you the very best poker content on YouTube. I'm even experimenting with live heart rate monitoring, which is kind of awkward, but it's for the vlog. 
Did I mention a splash pot Sunday? See those red chips in the middle of the pot? That's $50 of a splash pot. And so I have 6-9 offsuit, which is definitely not in my limping range, but to limp to win $60, absolutely. After the three-way all-in, I don't expect to see the flop, but when it limps around and we almost have a family pot with seven ways to the flop, all limping, $78 in the pot, and we've all committed $3, I'm thinking to myself, 69's got a chance. The flop comes out, five of clubs, six of clubs, king of spades, not the best hand that we can have, but we definitely have hit this flop. We're going to be betting, trying to thin, thin out the field just a little bit. The short stack to my left goes all in. There's not sure what to make of it. It's only $51. He could be going all in with a lot of hands, with draws, with a king, even with a five. So when everyone folds around, I make the easy call, $36 into a $180 pot. I'm calling this every time without even thinking. I said, I hope you're on a draw, and he says I am, which is exactly what I want to hear. I flip up my hand to let him know what he's up against, just a middle pair, and the turn comes with 10 of hearts, river is a queen of clubs. I'm hoping he doesn't have clubs, but when he flips over the four of clubs, three of hearts, I realize that he was going for a two or a seven. I scoop the $180 pot just like that, 69 holds up, and I guess it's true vloggers are luck boxes the next hand of note is just a orbit later i pick up ace of spades king of hearts in the big blind it's another splash pot with the 50 dollars in the pot and this one's not being limped around the player that went all in on two splash pots to go with 10 three offsuit makes it 75 dollars he's a young kid early years of college and i have no choice other than to go all in bring the pot to 466 dollars it quickly folds around and the player who bet the $75 does not look happy at all. I tell him I've got the goods and I'm okay with the $125 in the pot. He doesn't like hearing that and puts all of his chips in the middle. We're going to see a full run out, five cards for $480 pot. We're hoping to be ahead and we think we are, but little do we know we have him dominated when he flips over the king of diamonds, queen of diamonds. We're hoping to fade diamonds. We're hoping to fade a queen, but a beautiful ace of hearts come on the flop, basically ending it by the turn. I've got the green check mark. Our smooth sailing continues. We were very lucky to get ace king in the splash pot and to have a player go all in this is a dream situation and i take his entire stack i think a lesson that can be learned from this is don't over bet and don't get too excited about splash pots he could have gotten away if he bet something more like 30 or 40 dollars but instead he risked his entire stack with a dominated hand all right i'm hitting some bomb pots so they're doing a bomb pot for every touchdown that's scored in football today 50 dollars a bomb pot six tables and we're getting them all the time. I've won the last two. That ace king was a big double up to the bomb pot, and uh, I'm sitting pretty with about 600 bucks. So let's tighten up, play smart, not get too excited. Let's just not try to shoot to, to the moon, but let's just try to preserve our stack, maybe build up a little bit, and then make a decision on what we're going to do. One of my leaks is that when I get up a few buy-ins on the day, I start to play a little looser, a little aggressive. I get excited. I want to make some money. Uh, we're going to try not to do that. I get dealt ace queen offsuit in the cutoff. There's two limpers ahead of me, and I'm going to charge him $15 to enter the pot. The small blind makes the call, and the first and second limper also make the call. So there's going to be four ways to the flop. There's going to be more than $60 in the flop, and this is what low stakes limit is all about. You have to be able to understand how much money is all of a sudden in the pot if it's multi-way, and you also have to understand that multi-way is very hard to win. So I've been working on my heads-up game, trying to get maybe one or maybe two people to the flop, but when four people come, you really have to hit the flop hard, and that's what I do. King of spades eight of clubs ace of diamonds it checks around to me and i'm going to be charging these players to stay in the pot if they want to win the 67 dollars i size up to 35 dollar bet about half pot the pot's now 102 dollars and the players just fold away that's an easy 60 dollar pickup and i'm not sure many players realize how much money is in the pot when it's a raised multi-way pot once again, I'm trying out this heartbeat thing, but it's just awkward. I block the whole screen, and does my heart rate really get up to 150 beats a minute while sitting here playing poker? I don't think so. More like maybe 120 or something, but 150 seems extremely high. The table's still very good, so I don't want to get up yet, but I'm playing smart poker. I'm playing within my range, and I'm folding away a bunch of bad hands, waiting for a good one, which comes in the form of ace of diamonds, king of hearts in the middle position. I open the action up with a bet to $15, and the player to my left, who's become a friend in this session, he's supporting me in my vlog i really appreciate it he three bets to 45 dollars now as most one three games go this one is not particular three bet heavy and so this raises my eyebrows although i do have ace king offsuit there's no way i'm folding here so we're going to the flop we're going 94 dollars to the flop when i make the call i could three bet but i'd be much more willing to do that with ace king suited or in position or both ace king is a tricky hand to play because if you even if you don't flop a pair you still have a lot of value 
the flop comes four of diamonds, six of clubs, three of spades, doesn't hit us at all. I make the check, and he sizes up large to $80, almost a pot size bet. I find a lot of players do this when they have a jacks or tens, and the board comes out low. They're very relieved, very excited. They want to win the pot. They want to protect their hand, and they overprotect their hand, forcing me to play correctly. If he would have sized a $30 or $40, I definitely could have floated, but with the $80 bet I have no choice but to just fold the hand away and luckily the ace or king didn't come because he flips over pocket aces and we move on to the next one. I get dealt queen of diamonds, jack of spades in the small blind and I decide to raise it up to $10 seeing as I likely have the best hand with just the big blind and one limper in. The limper in the low jack decides to make the call. He's an older gentleman who plays very very tight and pretty face up with continuation bets on the flop. So when the flop comes out queen of hearts, ten of hearts, two of spades, I, of course, continuation bet on this board, although I'm basically always going to continuation bet against a player like this. I bet out for $15, and he instantly calls me, which tells me he has a bit of the board. Usually faster calls tend to indicate a simple decision, like maybe a draw or maybe top pair, decent kicker, middle pair, decent kicker. The turn is a three of hearts. I'm going to continue charging this board. If he has the one-off flush draw, that's totally fine. I'm willing to pay him off in order to take him to value town. I still think he also has some fold equity, seeing as he's the type of player that could fold with only $20 behind. When the river comes, the terrible ace of hearts, king jack gets there, any heart gets there, any ace gets there, I decide to turn my hand into a bluff. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I do think there's fold equity with this particular player. He, however, decides to call. I flip over my hand, thinking I'm defeated, thinking I had a bad run out, but when he sees the queen, he mucks his, and I win the $165 pot. What? We've played some solid poker so far and stacked up our chips and we decide that it's about time to take the win. There's a lot of small chips at the table. The dynamic has changed. It's not as good as it used to be. And I look down at ace of hearts, jack of clubs for the last notable hand of the session. There's one limper ahead of me and I raise to $15. I get called by the button and then I also get called by the original limper. We're going three ways to a flop, $46 in the pot. I've got position. I've got the best hand. Come on, dealer. Give me a great flop. Let me scoop one more nice one before I go home. The dealer doesn't listen, and I get queen of hearts, five of diamonds, two of spades for a very, very boring board. There's no draws out there. The best someone could have is a set, but it's more likely that if anyone has anything, it's a pair. I get called very quickly when I bet out $25 by the player to my left, and the other player folds. We do get a miracle turn card though as the ace of spades comes turning our hand from a bluff into a value hand and I'm going to be betting very small for value something that I can keep in maybe even a five or a queen with a terrible kicker. I size up to $40 less than half pot bringing the pot to $136. He only has to call $40 to win $176 but he decides it's too much money. I'm guessing he didn't have a queen. More likely he had a five or a pocket pair between fives and queens. It's too much for him. He folds away, and I scoop my last pot of the night, a nice $136 pot to end the session, and we're feeling pretty good about this one. The beautiful thing about buying in for $150 is when you have this many chips at the end, almost all of them were not yours to start. I rack them up, and I head to the cage. I'm locking up the win. I feel fantastic. This is a three-win streak in a row, I'm pretty sure, and a decent chunk of money in each of those games. I get paid out, and I head home. Let's do a little debrief. All right, we got another session booked. Our snowball is getting bigger. We're gonna try to use this momentum in our next session, but first let's do a quick little review. The session was short today, and I got it in with some big hands during some splash pots. Got lucky, my cards held up, and my chips grew and grew. It's just one of those days where you don't have to do much and everything seems to come your way. Hamul was running some great promotions. They were doing every touchdown is a $50 splash pot for six tables, and so, there were so many splash pots today that usually I try to stay away from them unless I have something really good because I just get myself into trouble. I, I like to joke that I've never left a splash pot day with money, but it's actually probably true except for I just broke that streak today. If you like the content, if you're enjoying the vlogs, please support me in very small ways with a subscription, with a like, maybe a comment, and I'm just gonna keep bringing them to you. I'm gonna keep pumping them out. I'm absolutely loving doing this. It's a lot of hard work, like I said last vlog, but very rewarding and I appreciate all the support. Till next time, Cato out.